here because of a dream that I heard one time that somebody shared with me. But another man walked in during the counseling and the prayer of that person. And his mom one day told me that she had a, a dream or a vision or something that uh, that, that man would give his life to Christ in her, uh, in her living room on, the, on his knees right there. Amen. And that man got to hear the counseling of that prayer of that time and that prayer of salvation was uh, given to Chris this morning. Amen. Amen. So you know that's powerful. That's exactly sometimes what people need to hear because they might be going through something and, and uh, for some reason he stayed back there and he listened. So there might have been three mountains that fell today. Amen. All right. show sometimes I love these shows they're kind of out there but it's uh Texas flip and move oh yeah have you ever heard of that Texas flip and move these guys buy these houses that are like run down on people's properties they're going to be torn down and they actually pay like nothing for them maybe six hundred dollars sixteen hundred dollars is the highest I think anyone's ever paid that I've watched but they lift the house and they move it they take it back to the yard and they totally renovate it and then they um they have auctions and they sell it and they take the house and they put it on somebody's property. I mean, after I'm crazy, right? These run down places, you know. Isn't that what God does in our life? Yes. Well, amen. He can move the mountain. Move the amen. Yeah, it's just an amazing thing. And God that we serve. Yes. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. We need, we need to definitely trust Him more, don't we? Yes. Amen. So we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Um, there's an intimacy with Christ that we all need to have. And I've been trying to share it with you guys recently. It's a... Um, there needs to come a time and place in our lives well, we realize something. Paul, Paul quotes this scripture and he says, let every man be a, let, let every man be a liar. Let every man be a liar and God be true. Let every man be a liar and God be true. Amen? There's a character of, of man that's in every one of us. And that character uh, desires our own will for our lives. Amen? See? And that, that, that desire, that, that, that character flaw, I call it, uh, is, is the, the main thing the enemy uses to keep us from the right walk with the Lord. See? And it's the very lie that's being told that keeps us captivated and keeps us from knowing him. And the beautiful thing is, the closer you get to Jesus, the more you see the world for what it is, the more you see the lie for what it is. My life without Christ was nothing but lies. Everything about me wasn't true. I could be a man of integrity and try to walk in truth, but I'm still in falsehood. See? And so the closer I get to Jesus, the more I realize that I can see that people are living in the world. They're living in falsehood. I can see it. I, first I saw where I was. The Holy Spirit is so powerful if you guys will let him speak to your heart. If you'll let him um, open yourself up to seeing things that, that are really there. You know? I, I talk to people in the world all the time and, and they think I'm crazy. I can see it in their face. Some of them will tell me. They think I'm crazy the things I'm telling them. Because they can't believe it. You they are can't crazy even see mad, it. But you know what you're talking about. They don't know what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you like that? <laughs> sorry. Thank you for being sorry. 
Uh, <laughs> but isn't it funny how the world has no problem just, just being bold and displaying itself? Right? And yeah, I call it the lie. And that's why Paul said, let every man be a liar and God be true. I call it the lie, and I understand the scripture that's being, uh, that I'm quoting there, because that lie leads to death. And that death without Christ is eternal. We die eternally without Christ. Eternally. That means think of the worst thing you could possibly think of in this life that could ever happen to you. Okay? And then magnify it by a thousand percent or something. I think that's too small. Magnify it. You know, Joan, that the world today doesn't even know what it means to be without Christ? And I'm talking the sinful world. They have no idea what it means to be without Christ. Every single human being in this lifetime that's living and breathing his air, God could just take his breath away and we would all just perish. We're all breathing his air. And we're all under his grace. There's not one human being that is not being held up and being sustained by the presence of God in their life. They don't have any idea that he's sustaining them and holding them up unless we share it with them. They don't know what it is to be without him. They don't know what it is to be without him. And he's everywhere and he holds everything together. Amen? When they die without him, his presence is removed from their lives. In Revelation, the book of Revelation is called a double death. You die physically, his body perishes, and you die spiritually, you're no longer in the presence of God. And I bring these things to your attention because the Bible says, let every man be a liar and God be true. No people, know the world, know it for what it is. See? And know it. Spend time knowing it. So that you know that all the things you're learning about God and His Word and all the truths you're finding, you know that they're real. Amen? Start to apply those to your life. Let God be true. See the world for what it is and live your life in Christ. Amen? We all struggle because we don't do that. We say we're Christians, Christ-like, and we spend no time with the one we're supposed to be like. See, don't answer me. I don't want anybody in this room to answer me. Okay? So just think about it yourself. How much time did you give God last week? How much time did you read your Bible? How much time did you pray? Okay. How long were you spending time with God for others? And not just yourself. When, when was the last time you were broken, heartbroken for a brother or sister that was struggling? You know why I wanted to share those mountains? Those things happen to me quite often, but do you want to know why I wanted to share them with you this morning? Because I had been praying about those things, and God brought them together this morning. Showed me that he's true, and that he can move the mountain, he can move the life. He can change the life. That he is the difference. Amen? Amen? You know, how do you experience him? How do you find him? How do you walk with him? How is it? I want to back up a little bit here. It says, uh, I love this verse, and I want to share with you guys verse 30. Uh, 130, 1 Corinthians 1.30. Really, it's like half of 30, but I'm going to read it anyway. I may have to back up and explain more because of it, but you guys ready? It says, well, did we pray yet? Paul, oh, what's up? You always tell me. All right. <laughs> Pastor talks too much. Oh, yeah. 
last night. So you like hot like that? I got in there. Come on. That's what what? I gotta wake him up back there. Father, we just want to come to you. We just want to come to you, Lord, just asking nothing but blessings, Father, upon your people this morning. Lord, that your word would become so real in their hearts, Father, their desire for you would be rekindled in such a way that a flame is burning so bright, Father. I just ask for that, Lord. There needs to be life in the in the life of your church. There needs to be life in the life of your people. Lord, there needs to be life in the world because your people walk in the world. And I ask for that, Lord, that it starts here. It starts in your word. It starts in their hearts. It starts in them, Father, knowing that every man is a liar and that only God can be true. I'm calling myself a liar. I don't want to be true. I want you to be true in me. I want to receive what you have from me. Lord, I know that I'm not perfect. And I know there's things in my life, Father, that I desire more than anything in the world. And I'm the one standing in the way of them happening. There's people here today, Lord, if they're getting my message, they're hearing the same thing through your spirit, Father. They're seeing the lie, the life they're living. They're seeing the lie of the people living their life around them. They're seeing the lie and the desire they have. Open our hearts to see the truth. To truly see you and have a desire to see you. Have a desire to want to be in you and to love you and to cherish you and to put you first, Lord. I want to ask you these things. These couple of little things, Lord, that I've been praying about. The one I haven't prayed about in a while, and yet you still made it happen. It happened because it happened, because it was today was the day that you ordained for it to be. Thank you for all that you had to do to make that happen, Lord. Thank you for all that had to be surrendered, all the lies that had to be denied. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mark says, I prayed too long. I was going to keep going and going. I was going to give you guys a sermon in prayer. Pretty messed up, huh? It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. Now listen to this. Who has become for you, for us, for you today, has come for us the righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Amen? It's one of my favorite verses because what it's telling me is, is that the closer I walk in Christ, the closer I become to Jesus, amen, that I'll resemble his righteousness. That's where righteousness comes from. The Bible says to seek me and my righteousness. And all these other things that, that, you, that, that you're struggling with, that you desire, all these other these needs you have, they're just going to happen. I love that because, Joan, when we make a life change, amen, let me rephrase that, when we allow Christ to change our lives, amen, then we start to resemble him, and, we, and in his righteousness, the acts that take place in his righteousness usually are what corrects the things we're struggling with. And it's usually what gives us the things that we need. Isn't it beautiful? You know, when I became a Christian, nine out of ten things just started happening for me. Things I used to worry about, things I used to pray for, things I thought I needed, they became nothing and they just started happening. Why? Because the change God was making in my life brought those things about. I was just telling a young man that that um, uh, just the, the new life in Christ, uh, we don't have to, to uh, make decisions anymore that are already made for us. The decisions are already made. Why? Because I chose to follow Christ. I go, come on, man, let's go do this, let's do that. I can't do that. Why can't you do that? My Bible tells me no. 
I don't have to make excuses anymore. I have the best excuse right here. My life's changed. This is what I've chosen. This is what God's doing. And he's made my decisions for me. I don't have to be a man of decision anymore. See? And make and those decisions that are made for me take care of probably ten, uh, nine out of ten things in my life that aren't right. They just change everything. Nine out of ten things that I really need that I could never accomplish on my own just start to happen because of who I am now. Amen? You know, it wasn't until me and Kathy truly surrendered to the Lord that we were able to even get in our own place and, and start to have our own life together. The enemy blocked everything, didn't he, until we got determined to say, no, we're going to follow Christ and this is what's going to happen. And we said it, and we meant it, and we followed him. And he's been providing for us and taking care of us ever since then. Amen? We never looked back. It was one of those things that he just did. Why? Because our life was different. Why? Because we made different choices. Why? Because God made them for us. Because God was true. And everything we tried was a lie. Relationships get better. Everything gets better. You struggling with something that somebody did to you when you were little? You struggling with something that said something bad that happened in your life? I was just sharing with somebody this week that the, one of the biggest <coughs> organisms in the world is, is, is a piece of seaweed that floats on the ocean. They're the size of cities. You know the seaweed you guys see float on the shore, you know? That seaweed is something that has been broken away because it died off. And it's still alive because of the water and the sunshine, but it's not alive anymore. Okay? But that, that root goes to the depth of the ocean, and when it plugs itself into the sand at the bottom of the ocean, it's only the size of a pin of a needle. And it sustains the life of an organism the size of a city on top of the ocean. You see? The lie is the city. That's what everybody sees, the outcome of everything that you're struggling with. The choices you're making because of your struggles. The choices you're making because of the lie you're choosing with. That's what the world sees, and it's as big as a city. It's a huge organism, you know? But when you start to follow Christ, and you really want to know him, and you're seeking his righteousness for your life, amen? He shows you that, that all that that the world sees, the whole lie, everything up there, has nothing to do uh, with the real problem. Start spending time with Jesus, he shows you where that all that nonsense came from. See? And it was so small at the time, it was something you could just pluck out. And when Jesus Christ plucks that, that little root out, amen? That city that everybody sees, that sin, that nonsense, everything up there, that lie, it just dies away. It dies away and you become a new man. You become born again in Christ Jesus. Amen? And you need to follow him. If you're a Christian today and things have happened and you're struggling with them, you need to give it to the Lord. And I mean give it to him. Leave him at his feet. Amen? He gave us life and he wants us to live it abundantly, Joe. We let the world the lie, even if it really it seems, even if it really came against you, even if it really hurt. If we let that control our lives and live our lives for us, we're just wasting life. We're just wasting life. I was telling you guys in Sunday school, are we just playing church? Are we going to step up and do what we know God's called us to do? Amen? Watch, we haven't even read that, huh, yet. Let's go down there where it says 2, chapter 2. See there? When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with elegance or, or superior wisdom. And you know what Paul's not saying? He's stupid. Paul could have came into Corinth and schooled everybody there. 
He was taught by all the best teachers. He was he was zealous for the for the for the church. He, he was a Pharisee among Pharisees. Super educated. He could have schooled them. Do you know what happens to us, you guys? The world comes against us, and so we take what we know in the world to go back against them. Don't we? Somebody gets mad at me, I get mad. Someone's coming to me, I don't want to deal with, I put a wall up. They know when they get there, they can't climb it. Huh. Your wife smarts off, you smart off back. <laughs> she continues, you win. Not you, huh? That was, that was me in my younger days. You know better, praise God. Right? Can't be saying younger days, I happened last night. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> There's a little truth to that. Where was I going? Okay, here we go. Oh, elegance and speech to him. Paul could have schooled these guys. He could have. But you know what he knew? He knew if I go in acting like them, I'm not going to accomplish anything. I go in and I share the gospel with them. Amen? Share the gospel with them. He knew that God was going to move mountains. The gospel is what saves lives, you guys. Mm -hmm. Amen? Last week he said he took all the, the foolish things of the world to stump the wise and all the weak things of the world to, to mess with the strong. I don't know what he said. You guys read it right there. This week he's saying, when I came to you, brother, I did not come with elegance or superior wisdom, I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. Amen? For I resolved to know nothing. Although he knew everything that they knew and more, he could have schooled them. He said, I resolved not to know the things of the world. I didn't have to fight my battles with worldly things anymore. Don't we fight the world with the world? We fight... Right? Yeah. right fire, fire. The Bible says that our, our, our weapons are not the same as the world anymore. Yeah. We, can, we, can, we can accomplish more on our knees in prayer than anything we ever tried in the world. We can accomplish more. Amen? By seeking Christ every day and being in His Word. And asking his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to reveal this truth to us. Amen? We can accomplish more by applying that truth to our life. Knowing that it's true and applying it to our lives. Amen? I came to you. Did I read all that other first? No, let me go up here first. Two says, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except... Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen? You know that it's more important to live that than it is to say it. Share that new life with Him, that born again life we talked about. Amen? Share it with the people around you. Your life should be the gospel. That new life in Christ is the gospel. You know what it means to share Christ and Him crucified? Huh? Is to have that character of Christ, Christian, Christ-like character. And show them a new life, that the old life has been buried and crucified. No longer lives. Amen? Everybody gone. And you jump in that. Let's start up again. Ready? For uh, I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. You know what happens to me, you guys? You guys think I'm bold. I'm not. I get out of the world sometimes, and, and people, let me tell you, the world's bold. They don't care who hears them. They don't care. I was out here putting up signs for movie night, and the kids that we put a basketball hoop up because we want them here. Out there cussing. Calling each other names. 
first I kind of heard it a little bit, and I wasn't sure, so I just kind of was like, what was that? You know, I was trying to be, you know. Then I'm out there by the street, and I hear it again. I start yelling at him. Hey, what are you doing? Remember where you are. You know? Then again, about half an hour later, not half an hour, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, I don't know, it was quick. Paul was out there. I had to yell at him again. You know? So I purposely took the trash over to the trash can, you know? Why did he do that? I want to talk to them. They began to apologize to me. I told him, you know what? I accept your apology, but if you need to remember who are you are. This was put up so you guys can be here. This is God's house, and we didn't respect it. Nobody disrespected them. They better respect God's house. Amen? Remember who you are. Know who you are. And be bold back. Those kids were bold, and they were saying things out there, and they were just beating themselves and getting crazy. And you know what? They're in God's house. They're going to know who we are. Let's be bold back. You have more influence than you ever imagined. Share Christ with those that are being bold. Be just as bold. Did I want to? No. Was I like Paul and fear and trembling a little bit? I didn't want to confront them. Be bold. The world don't care what you think. Don't care what they think. The Bible says to some that are perishing, you're going to speak death. But to the ones that God is calling to eternal life, you're going to speak life to. What happens if you don't speak at all? The enemy wins. Amen? You ready? So Paul came in fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words like the world trying to convince you of something. I've been telling you guys for a couple of weeks now, we've been justified in Christ. We don't have to justify anything anymore. If you're walking in the Lord and you're seeking Him with your whole heart every day and you're loving Him and you're sharing Him by the way you choose to live, you don't have to justify the way you live. You've been, your sins, everything has been forgiven and you've been justified in Christ. The only time man, especially a Christian man, tries to justify anything is because it's sinful and he's still walking in his past life where he shouldn't be living anymore. There's nothing to justify in Christ. It's already done. Amen? I love a life where I don't have to explain myself to anybody. I love a life. Linda, you're looking at me. You know what kind of life I love, Linda? You already know the answer before you ask me. Because I'm living my life in such a way, you already know what my response is going to be. Anything you ask me, I don't have to explain myself to you. Amen? Wouldn't you love to be that kind of mom or grandma? Uh, or neighbor? Your neighbors just know already? Yeah, that'd be terrible though, because I talk so much I wouldn't be able to talk to anybody. They'd already know. Oh, last day. <laughs> my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. You know how many people today in the church say they're Christians and they walk around with the appearance that they're Christians but they don't know Jesus at all? They have no power in their life? Huh? That's why I mentioned those mountains that were moved this morning. That was the power of prayer. That was the power of a life example set before people that didn't know him or they're struggling with knowing him. You see it? That's the power. Of God, your life. We should know that God's going to move those mountains, and we should live our life in such a way, and we should speak in such a way, and we should know it and see it when it happens. See it coming. Amen? But we live like that's not happening around us at all. Huh? We live hoping, wishing, we live all quiet, wishing that it's going to happen. No. It's meant to happen. 
God's real and the Holy Spirit's real in your life. I used to tell you guys all the time, I kind of saw it in the movie Friday night a little bit, you know? But if, if I'm praying for you, brother, right? And you don't even know I'm praying for you. You're out in the world doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. You know what I mean? But I've got you in my mind and in my heart, and I'm praying for you constantly. I believe that through the power of prayer, that the Holy Spirit is revealing my prayers to you, revealing himself to you, every time I choose to pray for you. Because when I'm faithful, my God's faithful. And every time I choose to pray for you, then God reveals himself to you, giving you another opportunity to change that or to change your life or to give your life to him. If there's people in your life that you want to know Christ, people you love that you don't want to see them perish, put them on a prayer list. Pray for them every day. Pray for them every time you think about them because I'm going to tell you guys something. God will make sure they hear you. And they'll have to make a conscious choice every time you pray for them to receive or deny Christ. To continue doing what they're doing or to let it go. Sometimes it takes a long time. I knew a lady since 1954. She was in the church. Right? And, and when I met her husband, he was already in his 80s. They were in their 80s. You remember when on in XL? The pastor at the time said it was like winning the lottery. Somebody that old set in his ways, gave his life to Christ. And his wife prayed since 1954 all the way into the early 90s for him before he finally gave his life to Christ. Keep him on your prayer list. Amen? Sometimes it happens quick and sometimes it takes a while. But don't ever give up. Excel was like night and day. He was just this lovable Christian man instantly. It was amazing. You guys ready? We do not, however, speak a message of wisdom among... Uh, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. That's the lie. You know what it is? It's... It's people think, and he's talking to the church, and he's dealing with the church. So it's in the church. He's dealing with people that have heard about the Lord, have heard the word most of their lives, but they're not spending any time with them, so they're thinking for themselves. See, they're thinking for themselves. They're coming up with their own ideas, their own thoughts about what it should be and how it should be. And I'm going to promise you guys something. If we're honest with, each, with ourselves, every one of us in this room today have done that. Some of us are still doing it. When's it going to change? When's that life really going to work out different? When's it really going to be real? When's it really going to happen? Are you going to wait till you're 80-something years old to find the joy of the Lord? Can you imagine since 1954 his wife's been praying, right? That means the Holy Spirit had been calling him even before that, but definitely through her prayers for all of those years and he was that stubborn. That stubborn. Are we going to be that stubborn? Don't be stubborn. Amen? Give it to the Lord. Let's let it go. Let's be free from it. Amen? Let's release it to the Lord and then, and then have and receive what he wants for our lives. It's going to be so much better. My wife says, come on, hurry up. Here we go. All that other stuff comes to nothing. Believe me, it's true. Can I share with you how it comes to nothing before we move on? How long have you been living it? The things God revealed to you, how long have you been living it? How long? In the time that you've been living it, has it come to anything? But it's held you back from everything, hasn't it? Isn't it time to let it go? You're going to spend a lifetime and then in the end, it's like you never spent any time? Like it never, nothing ever existed and your life wasn't meaningful? Right? Everybody thinks that their life's meaningful. Everybody thinks they're accomplishing things. Everybody thinks they have this or that. Everybody knows what's controlling them. 
They don't know the one that's sustaining them. And in the end, when that, sustain, that, that, that life is taken away and you perish with all that nonsense, you realize it was nothing. It's controlled your life. I love it when the Bible says, when the Son of Man sets you free, you're free indeed. Was that salvation? Yeah, for the moment. But what it's really talking about is you suffering through whatever you have to suffer through to give that up in Christ Jesus and allowing him to replace it with something eternal. It no longer controls your life. Understand? Take your life back by giving it to Christ. Give those things to him. You see it? Watch. I don't think I believe in that. It's a little better. Seven. We speak of God's secret wisdom. His secret wisdom. Listen to this. This is what I wanted to share with you guys last week, but I would have been over, you know, putting two of them together. No, uh, no. We speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden, and that God destined for our glory before time begun. You want to know what that, that, that secret wisdom is? That's yeah, Christ. Now revealed. And now can be revealed in us. Amen? See? All these things that are holding us back, all these things that are controlling our lives, see, when we choose to seek Christ wholeheartedly and we become his righteousness, his holiness, we receive his redemption. Amen? You get it? It's something beautiful that takes place, you guys. We begin to have the life he died to give us. Look what it says right there. I'm going to read it to you again. No! We speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden, and that God destined for our glory before time began. Amen? Do you know what God's glory is that becomes your glory in your life? Huh? First glory that, that's beautiful. First, let me say this. God's greatest glory was Christ on the cross. Amen? Okay? Christ crucified. We read it earlier, right? Okay? The second glory is you and I recognizing that and giving our life to Christ. See that? The third one is beautiful. It's every time we receive something from the Lord is what this is saying. That wisdom. Every time that wisdom becomes truth to us. Every time it reveals the lie. Every time it empowers us to overcome the lie. Every time it empowers us to know that we can trust and believe in that truth. Every time we receive a piece of his righteousness through believing in him. That's God's glory for us. You want to know why? Because it causes us to be in the uh, mirror image of our Savior. Where did our Savior come from? Came from glory. Amen? And every time God makes a... a, a an abundant change in our life that brings him glory. And all of those things are the glory that God had destined for us from the very beginning. You know what that is? That's eternal life. And a place where Christ came from, a very glorious place. Amen? It all leads to that. I don't know if it's hot in here or what, but you guys are the only ones that are awake. Amen? Sounds like, how dare you? I'm awake. <laughs> None of the rulers of this age understood it. And look, you guys could say, oh, that's not me. That's not me. I'm not those people. You've got to go on to say that none of them understood it. Because if they did, they would have never put Jesus on the cross. Amen? And we can say, oh, that's not me. I understand. But if our actions show something different, amen, then we're no different than those rulers back then. You know, my, my grandpa used to come in the house 
And he, he, I said, grab sit anywhere you want. He goes, oh, no, 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 where do you sit? I said, what do you mean, where do I sit? He said, well, I'm not going to sit where you sit because you're the king of this house. This is your kingdom, and I don't want to sit in your chair. I said, well, you started this whole thing. You sit wherever you want. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it wasn't for you, none of us would be here. So you can, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what he's trying to say? We're all rulers of something. Yep. See, we all think we're more than we are. We all put ourselves in, in the place where Christ should be. You get it? Mm -hmm. See? So we're no different than those people were then. Had they understood it, they would have never put him on the cross. God, the God of glory, walked in their presence. He shared who God, who they were supposed to know, who they were teaching about, who they went to the synagogues every day to sacrifice to. They were supposed to know him. He came in the flesh and revealed himself to them, and they didn't know him. And here Paul is talking to the church today. The same things are happening. Right? We're no different than those rulers. When we put ourselves in the place of where he's supposed to be. You get it? That's crazy, huh? If I said that in the world, they'd be like, you're crazy. Get out of here. All right, let's close up with this. I'm going to start in 7 again just because I like it, okay? He says, no. We speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden, and that God destined for our glory before time began. Amen? That's Christ coming and us coming to know him. Isn't that beautiful? No, none of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, this is what he's saying, they didn't understand who God was. The one they were supposed to be teaching about. Do you know that I really believe, though, that they didn't know? In my heart of hearts, and I have scripture to back it up. That they did know. But like a lot of us today, they chose not to know. Because they thought the lie was better than the truth. Thought, so yeah, they want to hear the truth. Are you sitting here today? You don't want to hear the truth? Today is the Holy Spirit telling you something that you're unwilling to listen to? And if that's happening to you today, it's time to, to deny the world, to give the world up. Trust what the Holy Spirit's telling you that's true. And know that He's exposing the lie. I do that every day in my quiet time. Every day, the Holy Spirit shows me something I don't like. Isn't that terrible? Every day, Joan. I think I'm a good Christian man. Every day, he shows me something. I thought I was all that the other night. I thought I had... No, I was righteous in my anger. I was righteous in what I said. I get on my knees, I read my Bible, and the Holy Spirit starts telling me, you need to apologize to that man next time you see him. What? I didn't say anything wrong. I spoke nothing but truth. Yeah, but he needed you and you weren't there for him. You thought your truth was more important than the man. Well, I don't know how I'm going to fix that, Lord, because the man hates me now. I'm never going to see him again. Right? Right? But I say, but not my will, but your will. Not my power, but your power. See, you're going to have to do this. I'll fix it when you bring it about. And I'll be in the right frame of mind when you put me in the right place. Okay. Amen? I'm standing here this morning. I look out the door. And who do I see standing out there? Oh, thank God. Amen? Amen? And at first I went, oh, what? <laughs> and the door opened again. I'm like, get in here. Amen. And I got to apologize to him in prayer. Amen? Amen. And his heart was broken, he apologized back to me. God wanted to mend that. What if I wasn't listening? What if I wasn't praying? What if I wasn't listening? What if I was just telling God what I wanted and reading his Bible and taking from it what I thought? 
When are we going to open our hearts and be quiet and listen when he speaks? When is the Holy Spirit going to tell us something and we're going to keep in step with him? Doing that which we know is true. That we know is right. You know what I hate the most, John? Is sometimes somebody will say something to me and I have to go against them because of what God shared with me. What God, what God showed me to know. I don't want to go against the person. I love the person, but I'm not going to be that person and deny Christ. Amen. Even if it's my wife. That happens to me sometimes. Yeah, look at her. <laughs> sometimes that happens. It could be your wife or your husband. You woke up to that one, praise God. Your wife? <laughs> Amen, right? Sometimes it is. And you have to say, no, oh, maybe we can't think like that. No, we can't treat people like that, even if we're being treated that way. We can't respond that way anymore because that's the way the world responds. The other day we were dealing with something, she wanted to write all this nasty, negative stuff. We go, oh, wait a minute. That's just going to cause arguments and fights. We don't, we don't want to be part of that. I understood her because I wanted to do. So the, that worldly piece of me wanted to just, what? See? Wanted me to act just like them. What would that have accomplished? If nothing else gets accomplished in the situation I'm talking about, and there was money involved in everything, if I just let it go and nothing else gets accomplished except for God, for any daily witness because of it. Amen? I don't want to put any worldly lying roadblocks up to stop that from happening, do I? Did you catch that, Seth? Worldly lying roadblocks. That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> kind of always a message a little bit. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Let's close this up then. Ready? M, M, M. Eight. I want to start eight, okay? None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Amen? They would have received him and went home to be in glory. However, as it is written, and this is the part that I've been trying to share with you this morning, that I've been trying to share for a couple of years here, is, no, I have seen, see the Bible says, I give them eyes, but they can't see. But when Jesus says that, he's saying they can see, they're choosing not to. Because I gave them vision. Amen? They have ears, but they can't hear. They have understanding, but they can't receive it. They can't grasp it. Why? Because they're being controlled by a lie. Okay? Then someone's got their finger up your nose like that, and they're dragging you all over the place, and you're following up. Yeah. It's like they dangle a carrot in front of the horse. The horse just keeps trying to get the carrot, but they can't even get the carrot because the guy didn't give him the carrot because the, the horse wouldn't move and stop and eat it. That's the way we live our lives, just chasing something that's never going to be there. Yeah, that's standing in your word. Amen? Amen, brother? Watch. But God has revealed it to us by the Spirit. Listen to this. The Spirit searches all things. I love that. I just shared it with you guys earlier. I can't get on my knees and pray. I can't open my Bible and read. Or the Holy Spirit doesn't show me something. He shows you where your life's not right. He shows you where you're struggling. You want to know why he does that? You want to know why he does it? Because he can't get you to hear him. He can't get you to listen. He can't get you to see the truth as long as those things are first in your life. So he shares it with you so that you can ask forgiveness for them, so that you can overcome them in Christ, and so that you'll be quiet enough to hear him when he speaks and not have all these distractions. It's the first thing he does. The second thing he does is he shares, usually with me, he shares himself with me in a powerful way. Something just comes alive, you know, scripturally. Amen? Something, you know, your life should be changing every day through the power of the Holy Spirit. God's word being revealed 
by him himself. All that truth just jumping off the page. It should just like elevate off the page. You know what I mean? It should be that beautiful. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. So the second thing he does is shares himself with us. First he reveals all things. The second thing he reveals himself. Amen? And then usually what happens is he takes the things he reveals about himself in my life. And he starts to apply them to a purpose that I was created for. Amen? That's when your life starts to have meaning. That's when you start to recognize the gifts he's given you. And you start to use the gifts through the power of the Holy Spirit to change lives. Not you, him, you know. I don't want any credit because that goes back to the lie. It goes back to trying to justify. No. Him. Amen? Watch, you ready, Harry? You gotta go fast now. Eleven? Yeah. Okay, even the deep things. You like that? The deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's little s spirit within him? That's not the spirit of God right there. That's the spirit of the man. <coughs> you know, in John 4, it says to test the spirits. It's talking about the spirits of the man around you, the men around you. Why is Antoine doing what he's doing? Why does Joan say those things? See, it's not for us to judge what Antoine's doing, to judge him, or to judge Joan for what she's saying, but it's to judge it so we don't fall into that. Because I don't want to do what Joan's saying. I don't want to say those things. I don't want to do what Antoine's doing. That little man spirit right there, that's of the world. Those are the worldly things in you. Okay? And who knows what the man's really thinking in that little spirit of himself except for the man himself. See? I can tell you whatever you want to hear, Paul. It may not be what I really think or what I really want. What I'm really trying to orchestrate. What I'm really trying to bring about. Amen? You get it? Here's what he's telling us. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. You catch that? Where, is, where does God's spirit now live? In me? Right? But understand something. I believe this with my whole heart. Are you ready for this, Joe? When you get saved, you receive all the Holy Spirit you're ever going to receive. But you're a baby in Christ. You've been born again. You have to grow up in the Spirit. Amen? You have to grow up in the Spirit. You have to get to know God. You have to grow in Him. See that? The Spirit, the Spirit's going to reveal all things. Why, Paul? Because He wants you to be right with Him. And then He's going to reveal Himself to you. Why, Paul? Because He has a purpose for you. Even the deep things of God he's going to share with you. Things that the world can't even, even fathom. Paul's going to know. Amen? We have not received the spirit. See that little spirit? Of the world. He's talking to the church. Stop acting like it then. That's what he's saying. I didn't give you this little S spirit, the thing you found in the world here. Did I give you a little S spirit, Paul? Amen? You get it? See, all the things the world sees in us come from that little less spirit. God didn't give us a little less spirit. He gave us something to really show. That's the glory that we were destined for from the very beginning. Amen? That Christ came and showed us. What, you ready? What? There's a little less spirit I can't follow. Well, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit of, but the spirit who is from God. Amen. That's the spirit you received, then. Chris, you gave your life to Christ today. Were you thinking worldly thoughts? Tell you denied him and gave him on. Then what were you thinking? Amen. There had to be better possibilities, huh? God had to be sharing new life with you. He had to be sharing something you knew was going to be better if you choose it. And you gave your life to him. The big S spirit. Amen? Watch. 
that we may understand what God has freely given us. So much more in Christ than Christians live their life to this place. So much more. The more we know Him, the more we choose to walk in Him, the more we choose to resemble Him, the more we know what we have in Him, the more He gives us. You know what He says, brother? If I give you something small and you're, and you're responsible with it, I know I can trust you with something greater. You just continue to grow in him, you need to have more in him. It's beautiful. Wake up now. I don't know where I am again. 13. 13. This is what we speak, not in words taught by us, not taught us by human wisdom. Not the world, not the lie, but in words taught by the Spirit, the truth, the love. Expressing spiritual truth in spiritual words. Amen? What he's saying is, is that these are the things we receive of God that we speak about now. This life we're living, we're living it because God showed it to us. God revealed it. God gave it and we received it. We don't speak about those things in the world anymore. We don't fight our battles in the world anymore. The way the world fights them. You know, Jackie, if we would learn to fight our battle in Christ, our whole life and everything around us would change. If that change isn't taking place every day, it's because we don't know how to fight our battles. We're still using the world to do it. We're still thinking like the world. That's the biggest battle to overcome, Paul. You gotta stop thinking like the world, even if you don't act on it. Just the thinking alone causes you to, to have faults. Just the thinking alone. Yeah. The man without the spirit, the big S see it, does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, the big S spirit of God. We can't accept them. We're not choosing it. We don't have it. Amen? Then what are we thinking of? What do we have? The world, right? We think like the world. So in thinking like the world, we act like the world. Because we think and act like the world, we speak like the world. And guess what we guess what we get? Guess what we get? We get worldly things. Yeah. We get worldly things because of it. We don't get the outcome that God has for our life. We get the outcome the world has. Why? Because we put everything into it. Yeah. 14. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. They only come from spending time with God and only come from spending time in God's Word. You can't get them from the world. Can't get them from the lie. They only come from the truth. Amen. This, uh, the spiritual man, makes judgments. This is my favorite verse. You ready for this? It's not my favorite verse. My favorite verse in this passage. I like this. This is what I was sharing with you guys earlier, right? If my decisions are being made by the truth that I'm choosing to live, amen. Then I don't have to justify myself to anybody. And I don't have to justify anything going on in my life. Why? Because Christ justified it for me. Remember that? Remember all that? That long little speech I gave? Listen to this verse. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things. See that? Remember I took you guys to 1 John uh, chapter 4 where it says to test the spirits? Not because I want to judge Antoine or Joan, but because I don't want to fall into what they're doing. I have to try to see, why are they doing it? Why is she speaking that way? 
Do I want to have that bitterness in my heart that she has? Do I want to be caught in sin and, and, and be corrupted again like Antoine? Dang, man, that was awesome. <laughs> picking on me today. Huh? I know. Gotta love it. <laughs> when you hear what it says, it says the spiritual man makes judgment about all things, but he himself is not subject to any lie judgment. Because he's living in the truth. Don't try to get it off her. Get that off me. Pastor, so mean. <laughs> For who has known the mind? This is my favorite verse here, too, again. Man, I got a bunch of them, don't I? You guys ready for this one? And this is the truth, sister. This is the one you need to hear. Okay? And if you hold to it, it's very true. Very revealing. Very refreshing. It's full of love and kindness and gentleness and peace and patience. It's full of God. Amen? Are you ready for it? And we're going to close with this. For who has known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him. See, when you're thinking like the world, you're acting and speaking like the world, you can, you can instruct God because you're not listening to God when he speaks to you. You're thinking about what you think it should be. Even if it's God's word, it's completely distorted. When you take it and think about it from a human point of view and you share it worldly. I've been sitting in messages sometimes. I just want to get up and tell pastor, are you crazy? Where, where, are you, where are you at? What are you thinking? Nobody here feels that way, do they? Oh, God. <laughs> Just open a can of worms there. Anyway, here we go. For who has known the mind of God, the uh, mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Do you really think you're going to instruct God? That's awesome. And that's what we do when we put, our place, when we put ourselves in the place of what he wants for us and who he is. But listen to the last verse. You ready? But we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Isn't that crazy? If you truly ask Jesus into your heart today, you guys, even if you're choosing to live in the world sometimes, every time you're in the world, you know it's wrong. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. Christ said, I'll never leave you and forsake you. See, Paul said, if I lie with a prostitute, I've made Jesus Christ one with a prostitute. He's not going to leave you. Is that nasty? You go, ooh, wow, what? <laughs> where, 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 where are the places you're taking him even if it's not a prostitute where are you taking him because he's not going to leave you see and when you're there you know right from wrong why because you have the mind of Christ now see and he that lives in you is stronger than he that lives in the world which means that you have the power living in you to overcome that and you no longer have to take him there you understand just start to know him don't just say we talk. don't just say we know him. Don't just say you know him. Know him. Look at all the time we spend in the world. And I spent some time in the world, though, let me tell you. I start confessing up there and talking about that. Don't we? Right? Even if you don't want to be part of it, you're listening to it. It's being displayed before you everywhere you look, isn't it? Right? We spent some time in the world, huh? And you know the dumb thing is, I find myself there, I don't want to be there, but I chose to go. Let's take a little bit of that time and spend it with Jesus and see what happens. Really spend it with him. Not you saying, oh, I want this, and I want that, and I, I you know. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, get rid of the list, the grocery list, or whatever it is. Okay? Get rid of it. And just be quiet for a moment. Just take a moment of quietness. And ask God to reveal himself to you. You know how hard that is? I don't know if you guys pray. The lady on the show was funny. She said, man, uh, What'd she say? Ten minutes felt like a lifetime at first. And now she doesn't want to leave the prayer closet. That's what it feels like at first. It really does. Most of us fall asleep within five minutes. Within two or three minutes, we're thinking about other things that have nothing to do with what we're praying about. 
right? Yeah, we have no focus. Yeah, we have no focus. See? But the more you do something, the better you get at it, huh? Amen? Let's give God that time. How many of you love to read? I mean, I know people love to read. They'll read novels. My son used to stay up all night reading a novel. Oh, this guy, tell me all about it the next day. Oh, this guy did this, this guy did that. You should earn this part that. It was amazing. I couldn't hardly get him to read his Bible. Hard as I tried. Take some time and just read the Bible. Spend time being quiet and asking God to reveal himself and just see what might happen. Amen? Really spend time. And then as the Spirit reveals himself to you, start to accept what he's saying. Start to accept it. That was your cue, I think. (laughs) Start to accept it, knowing that God has something better than than what you tried. Right? And then know, know that when he reveals himself to you, to listen to, to what he has for you. Knowing that he created you for a purpose that he wants to complete in you, amen? I don't want to get to heaven, Joan. I don't want to get to heaven and have myself complete in Christ there. I don't. I know it's going to happen instantly. Boom, I'm going to be complete, right? I don't want that. I want him to have his way in me now. See? That the purpose I was created for actually gets accomplished. Right? That glory that has been hidden that's now revealed since the beginning of time for me takes place in me. Isn't that? It's no longer a mystery if I have the mind of Christ. I just have to choose to listen. No longer a mystery, amen? Father, we just want to come to you, Lord, just ask for nothing but blessings, Father, upon your church. You know, I ask for blessings upon my brothers and sisters all the time, but, Lord, the blessings aren't, they don't mean anything. 